I had always liked the alien in the first film, and I, I felt that there were a few too many aliens in the second one, especially played by sort of short, bulky stunt guys, you know. Um, so I wanted to go back to the mystery of having one alien, which Fincher had already decided to do, but he did want a creature which we'd never seen before. Gordon Carroll, he asked me to do some um, creatures, new creatures. They want to redesign the alien monsters. David uh, was very interested uh, in bringing Giger back on this one to get his take on, on the concepts. In his mind was a kind of puma or a, a, a beast like that that was difficult. When finally I did it, it came out like a lion, something, and that was not exactly that what he wanted. He wanted to have a, an erotic alien also. So I made my um, uh, lips and the chin. With this part, you can make a, a erotic lady. You, you don't need more than that, this part. That's the design I did for e Alien 3 uh, during one month's uh, sketches. And yeah, they are all uh, for the fax machine. He didn't uh, come to London, wanted to stay in Zurich, and he was doing uh, sketches uh, from his uh, studio in Zurich. I made drawings with ink and the size that they go through the machine and and I made a lot of these drawings and I worked very close together with Connie de Vries and he is modeling in uh, plaster scene the things and so we discussed everything and uh, that's much better than to work alone. The purpose of the figure, oh it is, of course it is easier for David Fincher probably to see how it is really like from the top, from the back, from all the, how it functions as a three-dimensional three figure because this you will see then in the movies. Just to show the first alien I did was more a human being and the third one, a third film, it's more a beast, more elegant. All the mistakes or the not nice forms I try here to make it better, to make it more elegant, more quick and uh, more uh, aesthetic. There are, for instance, these tubes on the back. I did them because of the long skull. If he stands, but if he he's like a beast, then the long head is just over the over the shoulder. It, it he need he doesn't need any supporting. This is also an idea of Giger and me, the kind of the swords in between of the fingers. So he can like touch and suddenly swatch the swords are coming out through the fingers. There was this short chest. I made it longer, I made longer legs like like a spider, not not and um, then the tongue, the tongue of the first alien was so like a, uh, in a way, not organic. It was a tube with, with these teeth in front. It was really not. So I make a very elegant tongue, like a, like a sword. They can roll the tongue out, push out, and then it goes, the victim got in the, in the mouth and by pulling back the whole interior of the victim, of the <laughs> victim came out, it must be hor horrible. Then I have some design of the kiss. There are different kind of kisses. <laughs> One, there probably he, he could, this uh, <clears throat> alien could be very erotic and there are a lot of monks here and probably it could be a situation where they kiss each other and come close with the lips and then like here and then finally zack, and probably you see the eye open a little bit and then you see some blood running between the lips and then it, it pulls out and then it will be like that a little bit. I mean 
<laughs> this one with the kiss was tilted behind his head and now he's going at everything back. Here the poor guy uh, is, has pointed the lips for a kiss, but he kissed him in the eye. I tried to, to make a second, a kind of second skin, like, um, yeah, that they are perhaps uh, from a saxophone or from something you can, that m work and they give sound and how the, the creature feel. So you should hear how he feels. It's a kind of finger brain who should move, like when a, a wind is blowing over the grain. And this is the color. The color, color, he, they can be open. If this goes like that, that will be, uh, they will be pointed so like pointed like a so the bambi design yeah that was the idea of mr fincher to have a bambi like it shouldn't be like the chest burst the uh, ugly thing it should be bambi uh, so a, a creature you like in a way but not too nice and uh first my de my first design was too nice there has been uh, like little bears so I made it longer, longer feet, and also a little, uh, yes, like Bam Bambi is a, a little helpless. That it's the ox who was attacked by a face hugger. They didn't know, and they cut him off, and then the ba baby alien came out. The baby alien looked like... If we were to incorporate all of Giger's designs, I think it would have, it just would have been impossible. He had so many ideas. Or then like uh, in a kind of and we were at a point where we had to just dive into it. You know, we had we had sort of lost time during the months while the script was being revised without the start date being pushed. And and when that script was ready, it's like you had to jump on it right away. So there was no more time to really develop things in tandem with Giger. Um, and Fincher was looking at sculptures we were doing, and and he was totally you know satisfied with where we were going. It was just one month's time to talk, and then was uh, I didn't hear anything. I think they had no time to do it. I think I <laughs> I did much too much for for them, and the time was short. And uh, I think the idea is okay, but um, it would be great to have it. We took our cues from David mostly. Um, the Bambi Burster was the exception to that, and I think David really liked what, uh, what uh, Giger uh, drew for the Bambi Burster. So our goal on, on Alien 3 became, since there's one alien, to really focus on that alien and to make it everything that Giger's artwork says it is, you know, that, that, that all those images, um, uh, what they evoke, and, and how we could tie that into, you know, a world of, of uh, you know, foam rubber and fiberglass and everything we need to do to make the thing move, you know, and, 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 and make it seem alive. Even down to the, uh, the, the whole paint scheme, the whole paint scheme was derived from his, what, what, what we interpreted as his, uh, his palette that he was using on these, uh, on these uh, uh, characters. We had a couple of phone calls where we actually spoke with Giger, and at the time he told us that he was working on a sculpture. He was doing a full-size maquette of, of the alien in his studio. So he invited us to come to Switzerland, invited Alec and I to come to Switzerland, and at the time we were so under the gun schedule-wise that we, you know, respectfully said, uh, we can't do that right now. And that, that is the one thing that I always regret, to have, to have had that invitation, you know, and to just kind of, kind of put it off for now and say, maybe when the film is done, maybe afterwards. And then, of course, by the time the film was done, he wasn't involved at, at all, and uh, the, you know, the opera was no longer there, and, and I think things were strained by then between, between Giger and, and Fox. And unfortunately, we became, to Giger, we became part of the enemy. You know, it, our, it, it, ironically, our best interests were, how can we present Giger's work in a way that, that is respectful of Giger's work? Um, but by, by the end, I, I know, uh, subsequently in the years since then, he's, he just... Uh, has not responded favorably to to uh, to what we've done, you know, in terms of of how we've looked at the alien.